What's going on, riders? It's Paul with a Tuesday evening ride home review. Uh, well, you're probably not watching this on a Tuesday, so anyway. However, uh, this week I'm going to talk about Marvel's uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, which stars Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly, uh, Michael Douglas, uh, Michael Pena, and many others. And so and it's directed once again by Peyton Reed, who also directed the first Ant-Man. But before I continue, don't forget to subscribe to Ride Home Review on uh, YouTube, catch all the ride home reviews from last year on. If there's movies that you're looking to watch or uh, to to, rev to to look into, uh, catch it there. Uh, plus, like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. So the synopsis is uh, Paul Rudd's uh, Scott Lang um, is under house arrest after the events of Captain America: Civil War, and so, however. Um, they, uh, Hank Pym and uh, um, his daughter Hope, his yep, yeah, uh, feel like there's been a connection to uh, Hope's mom, and that it comes through Scott. So they try to figure out figure out how to uh, reach out to her um, uh, from the events of the first Ant Man. Anyway, um, I know that's a little complicated. This is like one of the more science fiction-y of all the Marvel films um, because they do use a lot of terms uh, here and there. Um, and what I, I really like that about this film, it makes it a little bit different. It stands apart. It's funny as hell as the first one. Um, Paul Rudd is just awesome. This is his best performance as Scott Lang um, in an Ant-Man, in the Ant-Man role. Um, and so uh, everybody just is very talented with their timing, their comedic timing. Um, and so I, I really enjoyed the storyline for the most part. Um, I liked what they were trying to do. And I really liked the connection to the wider MCU. Um, there's definite connections to that uh, and you, it's throughout the movie but for the most part um, yeah it's a really fast-paced fun film um, and really follows up well to the first one um, but there are some aspects to it I didn't really care for um, I wasn't really too bent on the ghost character I thought that her backstory was a little weak um, and uh, I just, I like the introduction of Bill Foster. He is an actual character from the comic line. And, uh, but um, yeah, I didn't really care for the ghost's backstory and that, all that. I thought that could have been a stronger villain type. I'm glad they cast a female in the role. Um, however, but I just didn't feel like it was strong. Uh, and I would have liked to have seen um, a little bit more of more team-ups between Ant-Man and Wasp. I didn't feel like there was enough of them uh, combining together. And I don't know, I just, I mean, there was a lot going on. I just felt like there could have been a little bit more. And I wanted to see more of them doing their thing. Uh, and so, so those were those were the big things. Um, what to watch for. Um, well, I, I think I mentioned it a little bit, the connection to the wider MCU, uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, and how that all connects and how it's going to connect going forward. Um, and, you know, the importance of, and I think maybe even Lawrence Fishburne's character might be a connection to the Marvel Cinematic past that we may see. I don't know. So, pretty good. I would recommend seeing it in a theater. There's some really cool things that they do, especially with the, the giant man portions of it. So, so all in all, it was a really, really solid, uh, really solid film, really solid second coming to the Ant-Man. And if you like the first one, you're gonna like this one. So there you have it. Once again, subscribe to us on, subscribe to us, to me on YouTube, f like on Facebook, follow on Instagram, and, I'll, and until next week, watch something cool. See ya.